This is the Analog Video Crosspoints in Surveillance and Applications webinar. Hi, I'm Ryan Bruno. I'm an Applications Engineer for these, uh, these products. And today I'm going to introduce you to the family of products, the LMH 6580, 83, and 85. I'll also introduce you to a similar product, the 6586 Crosspoint Switch. I'll explain some common challenges such as expansion for these products and you should be watching this this webinar if you are an FAE distributor and you want to know how to how to some of the technical challenges and also what sort of markets these chips go in. So here's our agenda for today. I'll be going through the six, through the uh, the 6580, 83, 85 family, the 6586 and then some common challenges for those. So what sort of object, object, objectives do we have for this webinar? The goals are you should be able to define the market for the 6580, 8385 versus the 6586 and understand how they differ. You should be able to explain why different why uh, buffers and amplifiers will assist the crosspoint switches in doing their job. You should be able to explain a key feature of the 6586 which is video and sync detection. You should know some common, la common layout tips. You should also know how to do crosspoint expansion. So th th those are common to both of those families. So what sort of markets are we trying to target here? In broadcast, there's a still some opportunities in analog routing. However, most, most, of the, most of the opportunities now are in RGB switching and video surveillance. So meet the family of products. You'll notice that some lines are crossed out and that's to emphasize that some products are no longer being manufactured, they're on lifetime buy. So please take note. We have uh, the family, the, the three switch, switch family. It is uh, the 6580, which has eight by four, eight inputs, four outputs. We have a 16 by eight, a 32 by 16, and then in the 6586, it is a 32 by 16. The key feature to notice here is that the 6586 has only 66 megahertz of bandwidth and the other ones have 400 megahertz or higher and that will become apparent later. So first let's, uh, let's talk about the, uh, the, the uh, 6580, 83, 85 family. What sort of target applications do we have? Well, high definition security cameras, keyboard video mouse extensions, uh, conference room systems where we have we have multiple um, inputs, multiple outputs, and the key feature to notice is that the, the bandwidth is 400 megahertz or higher. So that means higher resolution. Here's a typical application of where these crosspoint switches would go. Let's say you have a conference room, you have multiple PCs as your inputs, you have a DVD player, a few laptops, HD tuner, and you need to route those signals to various displays that are static in the room, such as projectors or plasma, plasma displays. We can also route YPBPR type content through these switchers as well. So anything that's the decent definition, we need to, you need to use this kind of switch. So let's take a look inside of these switches. This is a representation of a single card for the red, green, blue, horizontal sync, and vertical sync. So this is just the red. So there'll be five more of these cards for the rest of the signals. Typically you have input buffers because you have uh, a long cable length that's being driven so you need to buffer that signal. You have your cross point switch which can switch any of the eight inputs to any of the four outputs. And you also need to send it to a projector which might be another cable length away so sometimes you need drivers there. Uh, use these um, key specs when you're talking to your customers, such as inputs versus outputs, the bandwidth of what they're trying to do, and also the slew rate and the channel to channel crosstalk. So, what are some of the key features of this device? Any input can be connected to any output. It also has buffered inputs and outputs, which means that you save on components. If you're doing a system that doesn't require uh, long cable lengths to be driven, it, the switch can drive it itself. So here's a picture of our evaluation board. 
You'll notice that all the, the signals are spread far apart so that they don't uh, talk with the, they don't uh, interact with each other. You'll also notice that the digital section is off in its own corner and we allow it to be controlled with USB. So how would you control this switch? We have software. The evaluation software will automatically detect the, the kind of board you have plugged in for the 6580, 83, and 85 families. And you, you select what, how you want the matrix to look and configure it and you're off and running. So this, is a, this gives a reason why we might need to have additional buffers surrounding our switch, even though it already has buffers built into it. We have, we have, this, we have the video source, we have long cable lengths to be driven, and uh, coming back out, we also have another cable length to be driven. So we put some of our um, amplifiers and buffers there. Key thing to notice is that although our switch is 450, we want our amplifiers to be much higher. If, you, if we end up cascading things, it will ruin the, it'll, uh, reduce the signal bandwidth overall. So if you cascade these, you'll end up having only 200 megahertz of bandwidth, which just barely supports UXGA standard for, for your uh, computer. So key thing to remember here is three to five times the bandwidth and each individual item should be as high as possible. This is a competitive analysis slide. I highly recommend that you download it and look at it in detail. Some of the key things to notice here are that uh, we have the, the products that are no longer being made crossed out. Also notice that our product has TQFP packages with, with a low pin count which means that less means less board space. Uh, another thing to notice is that the smaller size switches that we produce have higher bandwidth than the competitors. However, our large size switch has slightly less. So keep that in mind when you're talking to customers. Next, we'll move on to the 60, 6586 analog crosspoint switch. So what is this part uh, targeted for? We, I previously mentioned that we have high resolution type systems. Well, this is meant for low resolution res type systems such as closed circuit TV systems, NTSC and PAL video switching. And the key thing is that the small that the bandwidth is only 66 megahertz. Here's a typical uh, application which would be a closed circuit television. In this system we have a cross point switch for multiple cameras going to multiple DVRs and you'll see that the 6586 integrates a few features like video detection it'll it can alert the system hey i hey one of the cameras doesn't doesn't have video and uh, we also um, adjust the input the in, the input uh, waveform to match our our part without having to do any extra adjustment and the reason that we need this is uh, there's there's a need for security nowadays and and to keep and keep mo and monitor public places so this will well be this would be well suited here. So what are some of the key features that this product offers? Well, it meets the standards for NTSC and PAL. We have um, programmable gain one or two depend uh, depending on what your uh, system needs. There are input and output uh, buffers that are, can be shut down to save on power. So now I'd like to highlight a key feature of this product which many of the competitors don't have and that is video detection and sync detection. So what are the difference between the two? Video detection relies upon the signal being fed in, how bright it is, and we can set up a threshold and that threshold will be able to we'll be able to tell do we have video do we not have video and we can report that back to the system so let's say some burglar comes in and they decide to spray paint the lens well now we can tell that the camera doesn't have any image on it and it will send a flag up to the security people immediately the system can report back we also have sync pulse detection let's say that the camera gets the camera is no longer working or gets disconnected or the cable is cut that can also be um, detected and fed back so both both of these features are are stored inside the device how do we tell the system that something's wrong 
Well, we have a pin called, it's the output flag pin, and we can program it however we like. We can have it alert if the video is uh, lost or found, if the sync pulse is lost or found, and any combination. So if something is not working properly in your system, it will be able to trigger that immediately. Here I'm listing some of the, the buffers that, I'd u that you would use with this product. And you'll notice that the bandwidths are much lower than the previous ones mentioned. However, you still want to use three to five times the crosspoint bandwidth. So three to five times 66 megahertz will, will do well in a system like this. This slide is the competitive analysis slide for the 6586. I recommend that you download this slide and look at it in detail. The key thing to note here is that we support video and sync detection while our competitors do not. Also, the package type we have, it's the TQFP, has a low pin count and it's easier to route than, let's say, for example, a BGA package from a competitor. Next, I'll talk about some of the common challenges that, are, that exist for both of these families, such as layout and cross-point expansion. So here's some quick tips for you. Make sure that you use a low impedance ground plane. Um, make sure to use controlled impedance lines as much as possible. You want to make sure that your lines all have the right impedance there. You also want to make sure that if you do have to cross your analog signals, you use perpendicular orientations so they have the least amount of effect on each other. So remember, uh, perpendicular. Uh, in the data sheets for these products, they mention that thermal management should be considered early in the, in the design process. And this is important because they do get hot. You may need to have heat, sink, heat sinks. You may need to have forced air cooling. And one way to mitigate the heat problems is if, if additional buffers are used in this device. It means that instead of the cross point switch doing all the heavy work and getting hot, you can spread that, that effort to a dry, uh, driver or amplifier which can drive your your line. This will this will cause uh, your, your crosspoint switch to have lower temperature. The, it'll have better ESD protection because it has a nice buffer protecting it and it'll, la it'll last longer. So sometimes the size of the switch isn't enough and we need to expand them. We can expand them in, in, in parallel and we will not uh, drastically sacrifice our bandwidth. So we can double our inputs or we can double our outputs using two chips very easily. And you can even do it high, you can do higher matrices, which is a bit more complicated. Okay, how do we do output expansion using the using the, these family of chips? As an example, I'll use a four by four matrix. We connect the inputs together, one by one, and since they have high impedance, we can just connect them together and terminate, and we now have a four by eight matrix. The way you do input expansion is by connecting together your outputs. So it's a bit more complicated when you're doing input expansion because we have, the outputs are driven. We need, to we need to take care, uh, care in our software that we do not have more than one output on at the same time when they're, when they're connected because we'll ruin, we'll ruin the, that channel. So there's two ways to connect this. One is to have individual, on the left hand side you'll see we have individual termination per channel. This will help your, your switch be able to drive the signal better because the resistor isolates any sort of capacitive load from the other cross point switch. While on the right hand side you'll notice that if we connect them together and have and terminate them together we'll save on board space however will impact the performance of, on, the, on the bandwidth. Because one cross point switch has to drive the, shut, the capacitive load of the other shutdown switch we're making it tougher for our switch. So the left-hand side is the better way to do things. In, in some instances, when, when we go to do uh, input expansion, it turns out that the cross-point switch can't drive much of a capacitive load at all, which is the case for the 6586. When we connect our outputs together, the load of the shutdown, of the other shutdown switch, is so much that it, you'll degrade your performance. So to maintain performance, 
it's necessary to put buffers on each of the outputs that have a enable pin so we can shut them down as necessary. So in summary, um, we've, I've defined the uh, differences between the 6580, 83, and 85 versus the 6586, the kind of markets that, they're, that they go for and why. I've explained why buffers will help the crosspoint switches do their job. I've also explained how to do video, how video and sync detection work for the 6586, some common layout pro, uh, issues, and also how to expand these cross points. So here I've listed the data sheets. You can you can download this slide and um, and get these. Thank you for watching.